in the course of 2023, I've been shooting mostly with my Canon equipment, but I also took over 50,000 pictures with the Nikon Z8 and Z9. And when comparing the Z8 or Z9 to the R5, both have their advantages and disadvantages, but something that I clearly preferred of the R5 was the autofocus. While both of the cameras have a very good autofocus tracking and in fact I think the Z9 is actually a bit more consistent, especially in low light and in backlit situations, I was a bit disappointed in the subject recognition of the Z9. Usually if I just had a perched bird or a duck or a shore bird uh, that was just running around or walking around, swimming around, this was no problem. But with flying birds against certain types of backgrounds, this could be bushes, reeds, or sometimes even a water surface with some waves like a river. I was not happy that the camera, the Z8 and the Z9 often went on the background and didn't detect the bird in front. So what I usually did was a lot of pre-focusing, either with the fo using the focus preset or manually interfering with the focus on the lens. And sometimes this helped, sometimes not. I was switching a lot between the different autofocus options that you have, from the small area to the large area to this custom area that you can change in the shape. Sometimes even using the autofocus fields all across the frame. And once the subject was detected with a smaller zone, I was then usually switching over to the 3D tracking, that the 3D tracking really tracked the subject across the frame. And while most of the time I managed to get the shot I wanted, there were also some situations that were really frustrating, uh, especially with uh, swallows and turns, where the camera would just constantly go uh, on the background and I actually missed quite some shots. In fall, more precisely beginning of October, Nikon introduced a new firmware for the Nikon Z9 and that's firmware 4.1. This didn't sound like a big step. Um, they mentioned that now you can not only choose between vehicles, people and animals, but also have a more specific autofocus kind of recognition setting for birds. And I was not sure if this could really solve the issues that I've been having. But my friend Nicolas mentioned that I should really try it because in his opinion it was so much better and he would be interested what I think. If I'm now happy with this autofocus performance or if I still prefer my R5. Now I took a lot of shots, again over 10,000 with different lenses with and without tele-extenders. And I want to mention my findings here in this video. To be honest, it was a massive difference. Um, it felt like a completely different camera. I, I was surprised when I had the set 9 in my hands and had this kind of autofocus performance. It's really hard to describe. So the subject was recognized much quicker and also if the, well, the focus plane was farther away, meaning in many cases, even if the focus was at 40 meters, there was a seagull passing at 20 meters the camera had no problem to detect the subject. With the old firmware, it was much trickier and I often needed to pre-focus on roughly 20 meters um, that it would be able to detect the subject. And this was no issue anymore at all. It's of course very welcome. I don't need to pre-focus so much in the field. And as I mentioned, sometimes with the old firmware, even the pre-focus was not, was not solving the issue. Another thing that I realized is actually that now I can, in most of the cases, just use the largest possible zone that I can set for the autofocus, for the subject detection, and just use this for all flight shots. In fact, it also worked quite well with using the autom automatic uh, AF field selection over the whole frame, but I kind of prefer the large zone because it's covering a very big part of the, of the frame, but not the complete edges. So that's the zone that I decided and I was really happy with the results. When I was shooting them side by side, the Nikon Z9 with the 600mm 6.3 and the Canon R5 with the 100 to 500 at 500mm, they felt actually quite similar. I had the feeling for more distant subjects and with a bit more busy backgrounds, the R5 was doing better on this overcast day, um, but the difference was not huge anymore. Maybe you can see it in these clips.
when I returned on a sunny day, I felt that the Z9 was struggling a bit more. Um, probably just because now with the sun, the background was a bit more contrasty. And due to this contrast, it, the camera uh, like jumped more to the background directly. Um, there I needed to pre-focus a bit more, but also there I felt a huge difference to the Z9 that I used half a year ago and to the Z9 that I use today. Once the subject was recognized, both of the cameras were tracking it very well. I would say maybe the Z9 even a tiny bit more precise and accurate. One thing I could not test with this new firmware was a backlit and really low light situation like tracking before sunrise. However, from my past experience, the Z9 was already better in these two things than the R5. So I cannot really imagine that the firmware made this worse. So Maybe it even improved more, but there the Z9 was already better than the R5. So from my experience, the Z9 really caught up with the Canon R5 autofocus. In some things, the R5 is still a bit better. This is still the initial focus recognition, but the difference is so small that I would not consider this as an important thing. As I mentioned, the Z9 also has some advantages in the autofocus afterwards in the tracking. So which one is better for you just, I guess, depends on the situation and really both perform on a very, very high level. One thing that is quite important to mention, I think, is that the Z9 is the flagship of Nikon and it has the best autofocus uh, hands down of all Nikons. On the other hand, the Canon R5 is clearly not the best camera of Canon in terms of autofocus. Both the R3 and especially the R6 Mark II are better here. I hope and I think Nikon already announced this a few weeks ago that the Z8, the smaller brother of the Z9, will get this firmware update in a coming month as well. So while I think both cameras have a fantastic autofocus system, it's still not perfect. So afterwards, after the flight shots, when it got a bit darker, I was taking some pictures on the coots that were walking over the grass. And in this situation, both cameras were actually struggling a bit with the eye autofocus. Uh, sometimes just jumping to the grass and I think here we can still see improvements over the coming years. I'm really excited what the future will hold and I really need to applaud Nikon once more that they are really improving the Z9 and existing camera so well via firmware updates. If you also have a Z9 and tested the new firmware, I would be very curious what you found. Let me know in the comments below and see you in the next video.